just want to step into you tonight. We want to climb into the ox. We want to climb into the lion. We want to climb into... Climb into man. We want to climb into the evil. Father, we want to allow ourselves to literally step into all of you. We understand the fullness of what it brings to your sons and your daughters when we live in you and move in you and have our being in you, Father, the fullness of your glory, your fire, your power, Lord, that's re- which is revealed and released into us. This is the season for us as sons and daughters to go deeper, to have a full revelation of your word, to have full understanding of the life that is in you, to have a, a new opening knowing what it means to be the door, what it means to be the key, what it means to be the gate. Father, it's time for your sons and your daughters to understand that we are the legislators, Father, by your will and what's been ordained for this time and season. That we will take back the earth and that the enemy has no rights. That he has no kingdom. He is a defeated foe. He's under my feet. Father, we have to begin to see that he can only do what we allow him to do. He can only have what we give him. And as we go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into your kingdoms, into the different realms, into that which has been made available through your Son, through the blood of Yeshua, we step in there, my King. Father, we thank you that you pour into us tonight revelation. It may be behind what we can understand. It may be behind what we can perceive. It may be behind what's in our box, my King, but we want to come before you right now in Yeshua. We want to say, Father, we destroy the box that we've placed you in. We destroy the box of theology that would bound us to believe certain things and be bound to certain things that's not of you. Doing things in a certain way and manner just because they taught us how to do it and we believe by faith that that's the right way. And yes, we've had success, but Father, as we grow in you and revelation hits the nation with, with the power and the fullness of your glory, the things that we used to know, we begin to realize there's a different way that has more power, that has a greater effect, that can bring the change and the shift that need, that's needed for the nation to fall into place, for the earth to be realigned with your perfect, perfect will. So that the image can be recreated according to what it's meant to be. Father, we love you. We praise you. We glorify and exalt you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. We thank you for your guidance and your love and your patience with us as sons and daughters. We thank you for the growth that you take us through every day and just the intimacy that we have with you. We thank you that you are attached to the front, the back, the side, the top, the bottom, that you are inseparable from us, that Jesus sent you into us so we can be taught and trained and equipped and to know everything about him and the fullness of him. We thank you that you are the word, Yeshua. And that tonight I pray that you will bring us revelation regarding the three-dimensional word. You will bring us an understanding and an open revelation of what it means to step into the nine skins of Yahweh. That one that we soak in. We love you, my King. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. We are wildly scattered this evening. <laughs> but it's good, I don't mind, whatever. Whatever blows your hair back. Sit wherever you want. <laughs> I hope you guys are well. I hope you are blessed. I hope you are on fire for the Messiah. I, uh, thank you, sir. Um, if you just give me a couple of seconds, I'll be talking weird for the next couple of minutes. <laughs> I, I remind you that uh, Spirit School is a time of learning, um, so you will leave here with lots of questions, and it's okay. 
Uh, we will have question and answer, question and answer times through the, the season as we go on. Um, I won't be able to answer all your questions. Uh, I've never made a statement saying that I know everything or that I have all the knowledge, although I, I would like to say that. <laughs> um, I'm married to a very wise woman. Her name is Claire. It means clear and clever. So it's very difficult to argue with that. Um, I do walk with wisdom, and I know that some of you have walked with her as well. She's phenomenal, absolutely awesome, and she's available to all the sons and the daughters of the Most High. I would urge you to walk with her. Um, uh, it's time. It's, it's ask as many questions as what you can. Don't ask them to me. <laughs> ask them to Yahweh. Go into the spirit realm. Um, focus on these things. Go on YouTube. Listen to as many of that which I've already preached. And listen to Ian Clayton, Justin Abraham, Jane Schroeder. Uh, there's so many uh, great men and women out there. I don't even know all their names. I don't listen to all of them. But I know that there's leaders that uh, has not even been discovered. Men and women that's leading the nation into phenomenal things. Grant Mahoney and Samantha, they're doing phenomenal work. They, they have uh, done phenomenal things. Um, they are the leaders in the spirit realm at the moment. We don't even know of them, most of us. <laughs> they are giants in the earth, and they've brought and changed so much in the earth. And, and I really just want to honor them. But in the same breath, I want to honor Chuck and Shay just for allowing me to do the spirit school here. Um, it's blessed me amazingly, you know, just being able to do what the Father has told me to do. And it's the way that it's all has fallen into place. Over the last uh, three months, I've opened up three, uh, three new spirit schools. And it was very strange for me because the Father showed me my destiny scroll. And then my destiny scroll, my ministry up to that point was nullified. <laughs> and how wonderful is that? You know, I've been a minister for 12 years. And uh, about uh, six, 18 months ago, he showed me my destiny scroll for the first time. And my ministry, as I know, it had to come to an end. So it was very difficult for me to change that, which I knew, into what I have today. Because most of the time, I, I have to preach in tongues, in English, because I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, if that makes sense to anybody, don't look at me with that tone. If you thought I, 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 I knew everything and had everything together, surprise, surprise, I just don't. <laughs> but I do trust my God, and I know that what comes out of my mouth most of the time is uh, accurate according to the biblical understanding of it, not according to theology, not according to man-made perceptions and the things that we <laughs> believe is true and right. Uh, I will shock you a little bit sometimes, and if I have already shocked you, it's okay. You don't have to cry about it, and you don't have to leave either. We're not gathering around messages. We're gathering around family. We are in love with each other. Don't misunderstand that. We, we are one with each other. You know, I love myself uh, lots. Because I love myself lots, I can love you. <laughs> and I, Because I love Yahweh that intimately, I can love you unconditionally. No matter what you do to me, I just love you. I can't help myself. It's like, a, you know, just help me, Jesus. <laughs> and I, I need you to get that understanding. That, that you're not gathering around a teaching. You're gathering around Yahweh and, and family. So that's what it's really all about. Spirit school is to enhance you. It's not so much for the corporate as what it is to, it is to bring you to a new place intimately with Him. Because your Christian faith is measured um, in what you do when you're alone at home. When no one can see you. Right? Yeah. It's just you and the cloud of witnesses and the angelic canopy, which is lots and lots around the throne. It, it says 10,000 times 10,000, which is 100 million. That's just around the throne. And of course, the kingdom is at hand. So it's right here in our midst. Kingdom uh, on top of the kingdom, on top of the kingdom, on top of the kingdom, on top of the kingdom. Realms, on top of realms, on top of realms, on top of realms. There's no space, there's no time. Don't look at me like that. You know exactly what I'm talking about. By faith, I say. <laughs> what I'm going to try and do tonight, is, uh, I've been talking like this because I, I don't know where I am. You know, can I say that? <laughs> I'm freaking you out too much. I was going somewhere, yeah, and the Lord showed me something there. And I'm so focused on that chair. I don't know what's going on with that chair, but I, I believe that, that the angel of the house is very active tonight, you know. Yeah, the angel in this house is very active tonight. Um, there's an extreme activity happening in the earth regarding angelic beings because the sons of the Most High is busy, busy stepping into that place of their authority where we begin to see and acknowledge. As soon as you acknowledge them, 
they will, they will begin to enhance the presence of Yahweh in you, not in the room, because it's not about the building. Enhance the presence of Yahweh in you because the desire that you have to go into Him increases. And that releases the glory out of you into the nation, into the world, into the meetings, into your family, into your workplace. And so I'm excited to, to see what the Father is doing. You know, in this house, the Father showed me uh, something phenomenal. I was, uh, I've always had the name Zephkiel, um, knowing that it was one of the angels that's uh, assigned to my bloodline and our ministry. And it always freaked me out. I never even thought of looking at what it means. And I was sitting here, and the father said, go Google Zephkiel. Now, I don't even know how you spell that. It sounds like a swear word. But I Googled it, and it, it just blew me away. <laughs> it, uh, there is an archangel called Zephkiel. It's one of seven archangels that's in charge of thrones in the heavens. That is assigned to a bloodline. To bring knowledge of God and to explain that which is in man to those around him. And I saw him standing on the side, a very, very angry looking angel. Not, you know, not angry, but very serious. And I've got always got two angels that look just like me, uh, dark, dark skin, light skin, focus and passion. And they're always by my side. I, when I drive in the car, everywhere I go. Uh, Zephiel's always with me when I'm, when I'm ministering. He's always with me. He's attached to my bloodline, uh, not just for me, but for my family and the generations still to come and the generation that has been. But, of course, this is the first generation that's acknowledged him and that's really activated the fullness of what's to be released on the canopy that's uh, over us and, and on him, that mandate that he's assigned to. And I believe that it's the same for every one of us. I believe the Father is in that process of getting us to acknowledge the angelic canopy more often. I don't know why I'm talking about that now. But the idea is that we begin to see what the Father wants to do. Because we've so much and for so long compressed and depressed that in the kingdom realm. Because we've believed, according to theology, that you cannot speak to angels. And nevertheless, name an angel. Because if you do, you're worshipping angels. Right? But in the same breath, we wake up in the morning and we can bind every demon we can think of and find. Thinking that there's a difference. If I speak to a demon, I'm not worshipping it because I'm binding it and rebuking it. But if I speak to an angel, I'm worshipping it. Does that not sound completely ridiculous? And so we've obviously in the process misunderstood the word. Now I'm not saying that everything we've learned and everything we've had up to this point has been wrong. Don't misunderstand me. Because we, what we didn't do is we didn't allow revelation to be revelation. Revelation is progressive. Revelation grows. It's always different. That's why I wake up every morning and I've changed. I'm never the same because I'm growing in Him. It's a continuous growth and everything grows. And the reason everything grows is because I can only perceive today what I understand today. But tomorrow I can perceive more because I understand more. And so what I perceived yesterday won't be the same as what I perceive today. And what I perceive today won't be the same as tomorrow. Because the revelation grow. Because the more I go in and see, the more I understand. And the more I see, the more I believe. The more I believe, the more I grow. So the idea is that I go in to the kingdom as often as possible. That I spend time inside of Yahweh. Inside of Him completely, utterly and fully. What we're going to try and do tonight and today is I'm going to try and explain. And I just touched on it a little bit. And I, on YouTube I've touched on it a couple of times. But I'm going to do the, the, the three-dimensional Christ. I just touch on it very small, short then I'm going to do the nine skins and just try and bring an understanding to, to how and what happens when we literally fully step into him and the shield that he brings and the fullness of his glory that's revealed to the sons when we start walking in that dimension of what is made available to us. And it's very important for you to know that there, according to, let me just quickly, if you want to go to, um, if you want to go in your Bible to <laughs> Ephesians. Ephesians 6. <coughs> I just need to find them in my, my tablet quickly. <laughs> Ephesians 
six from the twelfth uh, is the armor. Okay. For, we're not, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age. I just quickly remind you that if there's rulers and, uh, of the darkness of this age, then we have to remind ourselves that there is obviously powers and uh, principalities and rulers of the light. Yeah. Right? So there's, as they have authority over certain areas and, and, and um, cities and nations, because only because we've allowed it. Not because they've had some kind of a right. The only reason they have some kind of a right is because the sons of the Most High allowed it. Because we never took dominion when it was given to us. So whatever we did not take, Satan took hold of, and he starts using. Right? So we've believed that it belongs to him. Okay, but in reality, nothing belongs to him. In reality, he does not have a kingdom. Right? There's a kingdom in darkness, but the only reason the kingdom is in darkness is because the light, which is us, is not there. Now you might say, well, no, that's not true because he is the light. No, but he left it to me. He had given me dominion and authority of all of this. The kingdom of heaven, and uh, we spoke about this last week, and all the dimensions within this kingdom belongs to me. And he sent Holy Spirit to teach me everything I need to know regarding Yeshua. And if I remind myself that Yeshua is the word and the fullness of the word, then I have to begin to understand that that legislative power that he had when he was on the earth is that exact same power that the Father has given me to legislate what needs to happen on the earth according to what the mandate for the specific time and season we're in is. So I have to make a decision in my heart whether I'm going to step up into that place as a woman of man of God and start saying, Lord, I refuse to, to, to walk in what I see. And I start stepping into what I know according to your word, what it needs to be. And then start changing it. Because he's not going to do it. Amen. Because he's already done everything. Everything I need has been done. I have been completely and utterly restored back to the original created being. Man. Before Adam and Eve fell. Even before Adam and Eve. And I remind you that we are the, 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 the image of the second Adam, which is a whole different being. You can't compare the second Adam to the first Adam. Are you guys okay? Yeah. Am I losing you? No. Okay. Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand an evil day, having done all to stand. Stand there for having girded your waist with truth. Uh, what I want to try and do is I want to remind you that uh, Jesus Christ is Lord, right? So, in the, in, in before he died, it was just Jesus, and then he went into Jesus Christ, and then he becomes Lord. It's like a process of growth. And when I accept him, I accept him as Jesus, my Savior, right? And then I grow into accepting him as the Christ, and then I grow into accepting him as Lord, so it's a process of salvation. It's a process of growth. But the idea of the three-dimensional Christ is that I have to have an understanding of Jesus. I have to understand and be reminded that he's my example. And, and for those of you who have been in the kingdom of heaven, I've said this before, you go in and you don't see three thrones. There's one throne. One God that sits on that throne and he operates as one being. But there's three entities. It's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Jesus is not less than the Father, and the Father is not greater than the Son. Although that's what we perceive because that's how we know it. My, my son is less than what I am at the moment because he knows less than me. He has less authority than me. He's got no responsibilities, really. He's a young boy. But as he grows up, he steps into a greater place of authority, a greater place of knowledge, and he shifts from being a boy to becoming a son. 
It's a process of growth. But Jesus was my example. In the kingdom of heaven, he's as much God as all of the Holy Spirit and the Father. And I have to begin to understand that on this earth, when I look at Jesus, and this is in John 17, you can go read that chapter a thousand times, and it will bring new life to you every time you do. And ask the Father when you read it that you go and let him take you into the Word. Because the Word is a living thing. It is Yeshua in its fullness. But the idea is that I begin to understand that I have the capacity and the desire of the Father for me in this capacity is to step in to the fullness of what He wants to release for me in the wisdom of who Yeshua is. Being my example, I have to realize that I could have and can do all that He's done. That I can not just have all that He's done, but I'm in that position. And we've said that before, that He didn't come and die for me, He came to die as me. And if I begin to understand that he dies as me, then he was my example to how to follow God, how to understand Yeshua, how to understand the Trinity, how to understand life, how to understand the fullness of it, how to have complete victory, how to be consumed by the glory of the Father, how to go into the mountain, how to spend time with the Father, how to have victory, how to be completely and utterly an overcomer, because that's the life that he lived. And we begin to understand that he was sinless, and if I am in him, then I can live a sinless life. Because the DNA changes. When I get born again, my DNA changes. When I get born again, my bloodline changes. Just like his. He's, he wasn't born into sin like I was. Why? Because of his bloodline and because of his DNA. That's why he didn't have the record of sin in him like I do. But he was 100% man, and how many of you understand that principle? Because if he wasn't 100% man when he was on this earth, then he could not have been my example. Can someone just please take my phone and switch it off? And now, uh, I don't know, I've just switched it off and just keep going on. Um, the idea is that I have to begin to understand that I'm stepping into a place where I begin to realize that I am like him. Now don't misunderstand, I'm not saying you're God, although Paul did say we're all little gods. I'm not saying we're God's, I'm saying that he's my example and I have to look at all that he has given me through the eyes of Yeshua. That's why many times I've gone into the kingdom of heaven and I, I immediately as I go in, he'll take me and shift me into him. And I've said this before, all of me become attached to him. All of me becomes part of him. Like to such an extent that if I move, he moves. If he moves, I move. But the understanding I want to bring across today is that he is Jesus. He is the one that saves me. And I have to have that revelation of him. He saves me out of that unborn again dead state of my spirit. Because the true me is not activated because of sin. Then I get born again and the true me, the spirit being, is activated. And all of a sudden there's this war between my, my soul and my spirit and my body. And it's this constant drag. And that's why we divide soul and spirit through the word. But it's having an understanding of who and what the word is. Because I have to know that Jesus Christ is the fullness of the Word. Not the Bible, although the Bible is part of all of what I need. Because the Bible, the Word, is what holds everything together. But I have to begin to understand that if the written Word is what holds everything together, if the spoken Word is that which creates the sword in me, then what's the living Word? It's always having to start in the beginning. Okay, it's always I have to start in the beginning to get to the end. I have to start in the end to get to the beginning. And it's that full circle that the Father always runs. So for me to get to the, the fullness and revelation of the written word, I have to engage with the living word. I have to begin to understand what it means to be completely saved from this world. It doesn't mean that I have to change my hairstyle. Thank you, Jesus. It doesn't mean that I have to change the clothes I wear. It doesn't mean I have to take out my earrings and my piercings. It doesn't mean that I have to do any of that stuff. Because it's not the physical that changes. If you want to do that, bless your heart. You can. It doesn't matter. It's not about that. Because Yeshua goes behind that. He saved me from the, the dying on the inside, the, 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 the going to hell. So when I get saved, I have to have the revelation of he's the key, then I'm the key. If he's the door, then I'm the door. If he's the gate, then I'm the gate. Whatever he is, I am. He is the Son of God, I am the Son of God. Or a Son of God. Because he's the first Adam, I'm the second Adam. And when we start believing this stuff and start seeing it in this light, then everything changes in our lives because I all of a sudden have a greater dominion. I all of a sudden have a greater authority. 
Because I've taken responsibility in believing what he has said. And I step into him and I literally start walking and doing what he does the way he does it. Because he was my example. And then from, from him being my, um, my savior, Jesus, I step into him being Christ. That's the second I mentioned. He is the yoke-destroying, burden-removing power of God that I step into. That's the process that I go through in cleansing my soul from the old way of thinking. Egypt gets stripped in this place. Like if, I, if, he, if Jesus is the key and the door, it is me going into the kingdom of heaven. It's that, that, that first step into the kingdom of God where I just enter into the foyer. And that's where I get cleansed. That's where I get cleaned up. Where the old way of thinking has to go because I can't continue and go deeper if I am stuck in my old way of thinking. And that includes everything we've learned up to this point. Now, you think that's bad. I've done 13 years of theology. That was four Bible schools, five Bible schools that I spent money on, that I really enjoyed, went deep into, and tried to get all the revelation I possibly can. And at the end of the time, the Lord says, okay, well, this is something new. And now everything I learned makes no sense anymore. It felt like a waste of my time. And I have to forget everything I learned over the 13 years of studying. That's not nice. It's a, a, a pain deep inside. But I needed to understand that that way of thinking wasn't going to take me on the journey that he wants me to go on. I had to begin to understand that the, what he wants me to do and how he wants me to do it, I have to shift into a new place of understanding. Because the old way of perceiving things is going to block me and not allow me to go into the kingdom of heaven. Because my old theology taught me that I have to die to go into heaven. To his death becomes my savior. The old way of theology told me that you cannot see God, and if you do, you'll die. That was my perception, and because that's what I studied for 13 years, that's what I believed with all my heart. Then I go and see him face to face and walk with him, and that theology goes out the wall. I didn't die. I, I realized that I have already died as him, you know, in him, and like he died as me. And so in the resurrection, I was raised as him. That's why I live the life of Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live, I live by faith. His faith in the Son of God. In Him. It's, it's that movement that when I move, He moves. And it's the, the progressive understanding that the deeper I go in Him, the more I soak in Him, stripping me of my old ways. And that includes sin. And we have to understand that His desire for the church is to get to that place where I no longer sin. <coughs> Where I go days at, an air, at a time without sinning. But it's the understanding and revelation. First of all, I'm never alone. There's a canopy of angelic beings around me at all time. There's the throne and the kingdom. There's the fullness of God in and around me. There's a different kingdom that I live in that I have spent much hours and many times, much time in that I have to step out of. They say a spirit being that's in charge that I have to try and bind up again. They say a dimension that I have to step out of to go back into an old way that I got set free from. So I have to go look for it. That, that, that sin in me that's been seared by his glory and presence, I have to go find again. And it's a big fat mission to sin. It's that process of understanding that it's no longer part of me. I no longer have to because it's not who I am. But now I'm saying all this and I need you to understand that's the process I have to go through to sin. It has to be a meditated thing. It doesn't just accidentally happen. I don't accidentally sin anymore. Because I've been conditioned by His presence not to do that. If I want to sin, it's a, it's a big process for me to go. I have to plan it. Don't look at me like that. I know you do it too. And it's not nice. So I choose rather not to. I can go for weeks without any form of sin. Now you say, well, that's not possible. We sin every day. No, we don't. You can't sin every day. I'm growing in Christ. I'm going deeper and deeper into Him. And He's becoming so real to me that I see Him all the time. I can't even wake up at 1 o'clock in the morning to go to the bathroom without speaking to Him on my way there, speaking to Him on my way back. Because I'm going to the night watch and I've experienced the night watch plenty of times. Is when I'm sleeping, I'm awake, going into the kingdom of heaven. The Father's desire for you is to begin to see that I have to sear the old ways, the old lifestyle. I have to change my thinking. It's repentance. And I don't have to repent of sin. 
I repent in the way I think because I have to think differently. So if this school is getting you to think differently, then I'm doing my job. If you leave here with more questions than answers, then I'm doing my job. The idea is that I begin to understand that as I go deeper into Christ, it will shift me into different dimensions of who He is. Because His desire for me is to get to the place where He's Lord. If I go into Him and He becomes Lord over me, then all that I am shifts into place. Because He pours into me in a dimension of Himself that has not been released to the fullness on the earth to the sons and the daughters. Because we haven't made Him Lord of everything and all things. Because His gift is all we've ever operated in. Instead of walking in the Spirit, we've waited and hanged on the, the, the day of Pentecost, the gifts. And so he wants to take us out of that dimension of understanding. He wants to shift us from that place, saying that that is what I gave for that time and that season, but it wasn't the fullness of my Spirit. I'm giving and releasing the fullness of the Spirit today, and it's for the new sons and the daughters that's accepted my adoption and is walking in that fullness that I want to release over them. Can you step into the Spirit and start seeing that the gift is not less necessary anymore? Because I can have the gifts, and I can operate in them, raise the dead, cast out demons, reel the sick, do phenomenal things, and I can have a prostitute in my bed. And still do all those things, and you will never know it. And there's many that's doing that same thing. The trading floor that we are using on the demonic is phenomenal. It's putrid, if there's a word like that. And it's happening all, all over the nation. But when we operate in the Spirit because we've made Him Lord, once He becomes Lord, not over some, but over all of me, I step into who He is. I'm starting with Jesus because He's my first contact. He's that understanding and revelation. And when I step into Him as Lord, then I start, then I start breaking up into the different dimensions <coughs> of what He wants to release. Then I start stepping into the skins that He's releasing. Jesus is, according to John 14, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And we have to begin to see those three skins of Yeshua. We have the ability to understand that if I don't know where I'm going, I step into Him and He directs my every step. He directs my every path. That's why there's four Gospels. So that I can go back in and see every step He made. Everything He said. And the reason He said it. And the way He did it. The fact that He spoke to thousands at a time. And how did He do that? How does one man walk into a city and everybody in that city follows Him? Oh, I know how. Because He was Jesus, the Son of God. That's our perception. That's our understanding. But that's not the truth. He walked as a 100% man. What made Him so different? What made him so different that everybody would follow him, that everybody wants to hear what he says? Because there was an authority that he walked in. There was an understanding of who he was as a son of the Most High God, Yahweh, on the earth. And once we understand that that is the way to go, that's why they called Christianity in those days the way. Because it was different than any other way there was. It was different than anything they've ever seen. The, the Lord said, stone that bitch. <laughs> he says, no. If you want to stone her, you pick up the first stone if you're holy. If you don't have any sin. He wasn't breaking the law. He was bringing it back down to his own yoke. Saying, well, this is what I believe according to the law. If you can throw this stone, then throw it. The Pharisees didn't see that because they didn't have relationships. They didn't have the knowledge of, of, of knowing Yahweh's heart for the people. They just saw the law. But Jesus went a little bit deeper. He loved the Lord with all his heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. If I offend you, deal with yourself, please. I love you guys very much. Thank you, sir. See, he is the way, and we have to step into that place because he's opened the door. And if he's the way, then I'm the way. And don't get offended with me. If he's the way, then I'm the way because he's my example. And this was given in the earth. So whatever he's done, whatever he's said, whatever he made available, I step into. That's why I can do everything he did and more. Why? Because he's Yahweh and his desire is to release me into a position, into a place as a son where I do greater things than my father. Because that's every father's desire. 
is to place his son in a position and a place where he can do greater things than the father has done. Because that's the heart of the father. And I'm a father and I know I want my sons to do greater than what I've ever done. I want them to have more finances. I want them to have more wisdom and revelation. I want them to do good at school. I want them to be able to do all the things that they have in their heart. Because that's the father. I want them to excel me. To be propelled over and above who I can ever be. That's why I train and equip them. Because that's my desire for them. Why do we think the Father wants any less of us? That Jesus was the best at everything he did. He was the best rabbi that has ever been. By the time he was 12, he was asking questions that blew the other rabbis out of the water. They couldn't believe that he could ask questions like that. It was phenomenal. <coughs> then he disappears for between 12 and 30, and no one ever knows what he did. And I'll just remind you, he was never a, car never a carpenter. Never, ever. Ever, ever. That was his daddy's trade because his dad fell out of uh, rabbi school. So his dad had to fall back on his dad's trade, which was carpentry. Jesus never fell out of rabbi school because he succeeded in everything he did. That's why when he was tempted over those 40 days, he wasn't tempted for 40 days. If you read the word, <coughs> he went into the kingdom of heaven for 40 days. When he get his mandate, he scrolls from the Father. He comes back and he's tempted by the devil. But for, for 40 days he didn't eat or drink anything. Have you ever tried that? Of course not. If you did, you'd be dead. But we have missed so much that the word has shown because we have a Greek mindset. And as much as Greek, English, Afrikaans, German, all these beautiful languages is dead compared to Hebrew. And what the original was intent, because the Hebrew language is alive. And the Father wants you to look at Yeshua as the example, the way. The truth is that which holds everything together. Because if he's the way and the truth, then I have to step into him to receive the truth. We were never taught how to step into him. We were, we were taught that he lives in me. But he wants you to understand that you have to live in him. It's vice versa. I live in him, he lives in me. But when he lives in me, he lives in the fullness of me. He becomes the king, it becomes the kingdom of God, and he's got complete and utter rule and lordship over it. And as he becomes Lord over my life, I have the ability and capacity to step back into him where he's at the right hand of the Father in the kingdom of heaven. That's where my eyes open to the dimension where I can begin to see the blueprints that I need to walk in on the earth. Because that's the truth. The truth has been preached for how many years, yet no one is free. So someone is lying. Someone is giving something that's not 100% truth. Because it's man's perception regarding the truth. Because if the truth is pure, then we're all set free. That's what the truth does. It makes you free. Are you guys okay? See, are you getting it? Are you understanding it? Just some of it. Well, good, because I don't always understand all of it. I'm just joking. Here's the life. So it's the way, the truth, and the life equals Yeshua. So I need to begin to understand that if I want life and the fullness of it, the abundance of it, then I have to step into Him. Everything that I take into Him becomes alive. That's why the Word by itself is dead. The letter kills, but the Spirit brings life. If I take the Word and I put it into Christ, where I live and move and have my being, and we go into another dimension, into the kingdom of heaven, then that will come to life. That's why I can't meditate on the Word without the Spirit of God. Because it's the Spirit of God that opens me up, reveals to me that which needs to take place for me to receive the truth, and that which needs to take place is I need to go into Him, into Yeshua. Because he's the center of all that I need. Right. That's the three skins of Yeshua. Uh, the idea is that I step into that. So I have full knowledge and understanding of the way. I have full knowledge and understanding of the truth. I have full knowledge and understanding of the life. Not just the life that I know, but the life that he presents. It's an abundant life. It's called the Zoe life. It is a Greek word meaning the God type of life. A life that is sinless, that is seared of all sin and, and wrongdoings, where all things become pure. To those who are pure, 
Because the pure sees God. Now I'm not pure because of what I do. I'm pure of what he did. And the fact that I can step into him and into that which he's shed on the earth, the blood and the fullness of the presence of Yahweh. Right? When I step into him, I have the capacity to see the Father. I have the capacity to step into that which is completely restored to me through his blood, the kingdom of heaven. All of that, which is paradise, Eden, the kingdom of heaven, heaven, heaven of heavens, and every other kingdom that's available, every other kingdom that's out there, every other realm that's out there. That includes the saints of old, that includes family and friends that have passed on and gone to heaven. Because how many of you know they're not dead? Right. We have subconsciously believed that when someone dies, that is the end. But we know what happens. When I die, if I knew Yeshua, my spirit returns to the Father and my soul returns to the Father. The idea the Father's always had is that the body returns as well. That we have full access in and out like Enoch. That was our example. Then, Yeshua, then Elijah became our example. Then Jesus became our example. Moses had a knowledge and revelation of it. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, please, can I take my body into the heavens? The only one that's ever done it. And he was part of the, uh, uh, of the, Mount, the Mount of Configuration. What was that again? Transformation. Trans <laughs> I'm making up words here. I'm going along. Because he got his body back into the kingdom of heaven. And so the desire of the Father is for us to begin to see how to step into Him. How to step into the fullness of Jesus. Then we've got the Holy Spirit. Now I'm trying to go a little bit faster tonight because I want you to grasp it. And I've realized if I go on for too long, then, then I get this. And I'm, I'm trying to avoid that. So, and again, I'm going so fast because I can't help myself. Okay? A lot of the time, and I've said that to a lot of the time, it feels to me, and I might be wrong, but it feels like I'm speaking in tongues in English. So that's why I say, well, listen to, I listen to all my messages again. And I learn a lot of stuff out of my own messages. <laughs> Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, for me to step fully into the Holy Spirit, I remind you that Jesus sent Holy Spirit. So, Holy Spirit lives and rules and reigns inside of me. The name of the Holy Spirit in the Greek is literally Sun Antu Lumbanu Mai. I don't know if I'm saying or pronouncing that right, but that literally means that He cannot be separated from me. He is attached to the front, the back, the side, the top, the bottom. He's part of me. He will not leave me nor forsake me. He will never go away from me. He is there at all times. That's the promise of the Holy Spirit, to teach and equip me all that I need to know about the way, the truth, and the life. Because they're all in each other, all part as one. Yahweh. Right. So I have to have a revelation of righteousness. Now, I remind you that righteousness comes from the gift that Yeshua gave the sons and the daughters on the cross. Because his blood restored me and put me in a place of, place of rightness with the Father. And I mean right standing, which means where the Father is pouring into me, that's where I'm standing once again. My spirit's been revived and it's fully returned to its original. Now it's the process of getting to know all that I'm supposed to know. Because my spirit has amnesia. It's forgotten all that it's agreed to when it came into the womb. That's why I have to step back into the kingdom of heaven and slowly regain my, my understanding and my knowledge of that kingdom. That's why I can speak these things to you in your spirits going, yes, yes, I want more, I need to understand. Your soul's going, what is this guy talking about? I don't understand anything he's saying, I don't perceive it. Most of the stuff I can't say is biblical because I've never read anything like that in the word. What is he talking about? And the body's going... So there's this fight going on inside of you. Right. But the idea is that I push through it. I go deeper and deeper and begin to see who I really am. Why is that restoration and a revelation of the restoration so extremely important? Where I have to know that I'm righteous. As much as what it is my offense and my defense, it is my breastplate 
I have to know why I'm righteous. I have to understand what it means to be righteous. It means literally that I cannot be more righteous and I cannot be less righteous. I am righteous because of what he did. Nothing I did can make me righteous. But there is an offense and a defense side of the breastplate. And what they would do with the breastplate is they would polish it to such an extent that it was made of brass. They would polish it to such an extent that it shines like a mirror. And that was their, their offensive. They will run in and the sun will reflect off the breastplate into the, the enemy's eyes. And they will blind him and he has the capacity to immediately eliminate the enemy. But in the same breath, it will be defense. It will defend him because the enemy cannot stab through it. The enemy cannot slice through it. So it protects your vital organs. It is that place in you where you realize that it's not what I do that makes me right with God. It's what he did. Standing in that position where the enemy would come with condemnation, telling you that you are not worthy, that you are rotten and stinky because you sinned again, and you just told God yesterday that you'll never do it again, and you repented, and you asked for forgiveness, and the very next minute, you did it again. You dirty, rotten scoundrel. <laughs> and that's what the enemy does. He brings you to that place where he tries to condemn you and push you down. But righteousness and the revelation of righteousness propels you right back into the Holy Spirit. Propels you right back into the fullness of Christ. Because that's what the understanding brings. But nothing can make me less righteous. But in the same breath, that's the other side of righteousness. Same as holiness. I have to work at my righteousness. Not because of works. But I want to believe that I'm righteous. When I have the knowledge that I'm righteous and I'll operate in a righteous way. So it's again in the same breath as well. It's a gift. It's also a progressive time of learning and growing into my righteousness. Right. Then, of course, peace. Peace surpasses all knowledge. This is, the, this is beyond what we can begin to fathom. It's that, that place in, in Yahweh, and I, not Yahweh, in um, Jehovah, which I believe Jehovah was always the representation of Jesus. Because Jesus is peace. And if you know Jesus, you know peace. And if you... You know, they're saying, no Jesus, no peace, no Jesus, no peace, right? <laughs> so if I have Jesus, I have peace, but I have to understand what's the fullness of peace because I want to step into what Holy Spirit brings. And Holy Spirit, so Holy Spirit brings me the knowledge of Jesus, which is the fullness of peace. It's that place where my understanding, my, 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 my warfare, that place where the enemy comes against me is in a knowledge of no matter what he brings, there's protection because I've got a new mind. I have a new understanding. I have walked through the baptism of repentance because of who I am in Christ. I no longer receive what the enemy brings and what he says runs off me like water off a duck's back. Although that's just what it should be like. It's not always like that, is it? Because we hear the enemy, we perceive what he says and we believe it. We believe it and we got knocked off our horse. Now, I've said this many times, the Father has given us a gift. And all of this that I'm talking about tonight, and I'm trying not to lose you, um, all that we've talked about tonight up to this point, it gets enhanced as you pray in the Spirit. You can never neglect the praying in tongues. Because it's, it shifts you into a different mindset. It shifts you into a different place because it enhances your spirit and brings your spirit to a place of growth. So speaking in tongues is your lance. I always say this. It's your spear in your warfare because it brings you to a place where you have the prophetic in you to such an extent that you can see before it happens. So when the enemy comes against you while you're praying in tongues, there will be an understanding and revelation of what the enemy is bringing. So you'll know in advance because praying in tongues shifts you from the natural into the spiritual. And when you're in the spirit, all things are exposed and what the enemy brings, you can stop before it gets to you because his desire is to take you out. Once you've, ta you've been taken out, then you have to go through that process of trying to get back into it. And by that time, he's killed, steal, and destroyed as much as he possibly can. Because he can't do anything less than the flesh. Right, so praying in tongues is essential for everything I've been talking about tonight. Up to this point. Peace is that place of understanding that no matter what's going on in my life, I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, whatever it is, he will work it out for the good. For those who are in Christ, because I've already walked through the process of the way, the truth, and life. I've already gone through the process of believing and understanding that He is the Jesus. 
He is the one that saves me. He is the one that is the gate and the door. He is the one that takes me to the foyer and cleanses me. He is the one that brings me to that place of lordship inside of me where he rules all and everything on the inside and on the outside and takes me into that place of righteousness. He's the one that brings peace to me at all times, no matter what happens in my day. And if you know my life, and I don't talk about my life too much because it doesn't really bother me, and it's, it, 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 it's literally just runs off me. But the stuff we go through on a daily basis, it, it, it's just attacks. Uh, uh, people coming against the ministry, people coming against what we preach, coming against who we are, what we look like. Like, seriously. And um, it, it affects me for about two seconds. And that's it. Because I have peace. I know what it's called me to do. I'm not here to please you. I'm not here to make you smile. I'm not here to do anything you want me to do. I'm here to do His will. I, I enjoy His will. Why? Because His will is my will. I do what I want to. Because what I want to do is what He wants me to do. Because He's raised me up to that point. He doesn't tell me what to do. I'm not His slave. I'm not His servant. I'm his son. It's a dimension of growth that takes place in, in those who want to grow and go deeper. You can stay a servant all your life. You'll have a great Christian life. You'll be blessed. But you can grow. You can become a bond servant. And you can grow in that and you become a son. But you have to have a revelation of the adoption that he's bringing. You have to have a, a revelation of the, the covenant of adoption. Because it's different than the spirit of adoption. It's a revelation of growth that you have to step into and desire. Because as you desire, he opens up the doors for you to step into. And peace, stepping into the Holy Spirit, brings all of that, makes all of that so much easier to grasp and to receive. Shalom. And of course, joy. Joy is something that the enemy will do everything in his power to steal, to take. Because you've got a crown of joy. And the enemy loves to take your crown of joy. He loves to knock it off your head. He enjoys the fact that you, you, you confuse the joy with happiness. And happiness is a feeling that comes from the flesh, which is not a bad thing. It's not bad to be happy. It's not bad because I want to have that balance between my body, soul, and spirit. And so we've been taught that any form of feeling is bad and wrong. You don't want to be, you don't want to, don't want to, don't want to be directed by your feelings. And that's true. I don't want to be directed by my feelings. But I don't want to confuse happiness with joy. Because happiness is a feeling that can fade, that can go away. The enemy can't steal my happiness because he just, he just has to change my perception of uh, where I'm at. And if I don't have joy and I only have happiness, then I'll get depressed. And I can grow in depression. Depression turns into oppression or suppression. It turns into oppression. It turns into possession. It's a growth where you eventually find yourself completely possessed by a demon. Where you split personalities after personalities because of what you believe according to what you feel. But joy is a whole different ball game. It's part of the fruit, which means it can grow. It's a gift because it can constantly enhance all of your life. It puts you in a state of faith. Because no matter what happens, the enemy cannot steal my joy. And if he does, I have the capacity through Yeshua to go into the spirit because I've been restored through the blood to go back in and see where he's dropped it. And let me tell you something. Man is one of the biggest entities, if I can say that, that will knock off your crown of joy. Because man, not because they want to be evil or want to bring hurt, but because of lack of truth and understanding in them, they will say stupid things that can steal of your joy. And that's when the enemy comes and knocks off your, your crown of joy and takes it. And you'll feel in you that you've lost something, you wouldn't know what it was, but as soon as you step into the spirit, it will be revealed to you, and you go pick up, you can literally go take it back from the enemy, and you present it to see glass. See, it's his desire for us to walk in the fullness of this. And when I start walking in righteousness, peace, and joy, that's when I literally, and in the fullness of it, steps into the Holy Spirit. Now you have to begin to understand, I'm already in six of these skins. I'm stepping into Yeshua, I'm stepping into Holy Spirit, and the desire for the Father, the Father has, we step in all of Him. And the fullness that comes with that. In Psalm 89 and 14, it says, Justice and judgment are the foundations of the throne. Mercy and truth shall be before your face. See, he needs us to understand what it means to have that justice of God on our side. That's what I love about the courtrooms. I love about the mobile court. Now, I will be teaching on the mobile court. I don't have full revelation of it. I have a lot of revelation on it. It's changed my life. 
but I, I will teach on it eventually, but I will talk about it very often. So if you can find some time in your, do, in your day, go find out about the mobile court from, from other great men of God that's already teach that. So go, go do some search about it. Go do some work regarding it so you have some kind of an understanding of it. But it's really all about the courtroom. It's understanding how the court works. And so the judgment or the judging is where he is literally my judge. And his judgment over me brings life. We have been afraid of his judgment because of what they taught us. But his judgment over me, because I'm in him, because of his son's blood, because I'm covered by him, because I've been restored in the covering, and he is my covering, I'm in and under him. When he judges me, it brings life. It's, it sears, and it brings hope, and it brings the fullness of his glory, and it lifts me up and puts me in a new place, and it literally cleans me out putting a new turban on my head, putting a new garment on my shoulders. He shifts me to a new place. Every time he judges me, I love his judgment because that's part of who he is, and I step into that part of him. But in the same breath, I remind myself that he is also justice. There's no lie, there's no deceit in him. According to law, he will abide. He's not going to step out of it for you. He's not going to step to the left or to the right. According to his word is what he will stick to. If he said something, he will do it. We have to understand the character of the father. And I look at myself as a father. If I say something in my house once and I don't stick to what I said, if I break the rule, that rule does not apply anymore. Do you understand what I'm saying? If I say to my sons, you have to go to bed at 9 o'clock. And at 9 o'clock comes and I say, oh, you know what? It's okay, stay up until half past nine. Nine o'clock's out of the window because the judge changed his judgment and I'm no longer justice. Does that make sense to you? What I said's changed, so I, I have no longer right over the nine o'clock because it's been taken. But if I stick to my nine o'clock and I said, no, that's, what I, that's not what I said. I said nine o'clock, that's it, go to bed. Then that's where it will be. You got to understand that? And we have to begin to find the Father in that dimension and step into it. Because that's his desire. And in the same breath, I'm trying to close up. In the same breath, we have to see him as the merciful. As the one that always and in all situations wants the best for you. That he will do everything in his power to get you where you need to be. That he will do everything in his power to lift you up. He will do everything in his power to keep you in his will. Because his desire, according to to the grace that he has on and over his sons and daughters is to always have you in his heart. You know, I look at my father and I am in awe of him because what I knew of him before I really got to know him was he is a mean God that if I sin, he will kill my dog. That's what I believed. If, if, I, if I did something wrong, someone will break into my house because I came against him. Or someone would steal my stuff. Or someone would hurt my child. That, that was my perception. But as I got to know him, I realized how full of grace, how full of mercy he is. Because the three skins makes him just, makes him ju judge, makes him a, my, my, my judge, and makes him that father soft, gentle, cuddly bear that I don't know how to explain in any other way. Where as, as angry and as straight up as what he can be, he's never towards me. He hates the enemy and he's an extreme jealous God. But when it comes to me, when it comes to his son, he is as soft as you could possibly be. He has mercy, he has grace, he has so much love for his sons and his daughters that we can't even begin to fathom it. I said that before. The first time I went into his throne room, I had my own protocol. And it was fearful for me. And I was afraid because I, my subconscious thought, well, I can't see him. So I did everything very scared for him. And at the end, when I had my protocol done, he gave me a hug. And it was a phenomenal hug. But the second time I came back, I haven't even put my foot on the, th on the floor yet. And he jumped up off the throne and ran to me. Because that's how much he wants to be with his sons and his daughters. He says it so many times. He says, I have waited so many years for my sons and daughters to come in. 
They had never understood. I say, if you search for me with all your heart, mind, soul, body, and strength, you will find me. If you search with me with all of you, you'll find me. And what do they do? They say, we're waiting for you, Lord. Come. Come, Lord. How can I be searching for him if he has to come? If I'm searching for him and he has to come to me, then he's the one searching for me. But if I'm the one searching for him, then I go where he is. And according to the word, he's in the kingdom of heaven, where Jesus is at the right hand of him. Are you guys okay? Yeah. Let's stand up. Father, we just absolutely love you. We glorify and magnify you, and we thank you, Yeshua, for who you are and what you've done. We thank you that we can step into you and we'll be consumed with all nine skins. Father, that revelation of, of the joy, of the peace, and of righteousness. Father, having an understanding of you being the way, the truth, and the life. Have an understanding of, of you being the judge, that you, being, that you have justice, that you are the, 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 the gracious one. We step into all of that, Father. How can the enemy possibly get to me if I'm so consumed in all of that, Father? And then still I have body, soul, spirit that has already been consumed by you that also steps into all of that, Father. I pray that you will just bring a revelation to that which you want to reveal to your sons, Father, and your daughters. As we become all that we can be, Father, today, not tomorrow, not the day after, Father, today we decide yes. Today we start walking in it. Today we go in. Today we have revelation of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, as he soaks me in that place where I walk into the door because he's the key and he has saved me. He is the door and I have access. And I step into the foyer. He starts cleansing me with the anointing, the yoke-destroying, burden-removing power of God, taking the Egypt out of me, cleansing me. Then I have to choose to let him in and make him Lord over all and every aspect of my being. And in that process... I have to start stepping into the Holy Spirit, start stepping into the fullness of Yeshua, start stepping into the fullness of the Father, start dwelling with Him, start living and moving in that realm that He's made available through His blood for His sons and daughters. Father, growing into you deeper and deeper and deeper and start soaking on all that you have and start eating of you and drinking of you, changing my DNA and my bloodline and going back from, from darkness into light and the fullness of the light, Father, so we can operate in the light and we can step out of underway, uh, underneath from the sun and the moon and start operating outside of space and time. We can begin to legislate the fullness of, of what you have given the sons and daughters to bring to the earth and start reshaping the earth to the image of Christ so we can begin to see you again. Father, we love you, we praise you, and I pray a blessing of everyone in this room. I pray for revelation and insight, and I pray for the Holy Spirit to open and enhance every soul in this room, so we can begin to receive from our spirit that's in Christ, and the fullness of that revelation that we need for this time and season. Lord, we love you, we praise you, in Jesus' name, amen.